Hello everyone. First of all, let me give you my introduction. My name is Amit Kumar Agrawal. Total experience around 12 plus years and I have done my CCI in RNS service provider and data center domain. In this video, we are going to discuss about how we can create tenant and uh, when you create a tenant, uh, inside that tenant you have to create a VRF as well as you have to create a bridge domain. Right, so there are two types of bridge domain available. So you can create a layer three, like you, the, the subnet which you are going to assign to this bridge domain can be routed outside the network, or you can create a layer two bridge domain as well. Means in that case, the gateway is not on ACI, it's outside ACI, either it is a firewall or some other device. So let first of all let's discuss how we can create tenant. So for creating a tenant through ACI GUI, you have to go to tenant action and then create tenant. Then you have to provide the name, a very generic name, so that uh, during the troubleshooting time you can easily identify uh, the device. You know. So here I have given the name server prod means this is a server tenant where we have the production device right inside the tenant I have created one VRF that is that how you can create it you have to go to tenant networking right click and click on create VRF then VRF name is also uh, generic it's VRF underscore server one that means when it's it's a VRF for servers right so once you create the VRF then the next thing is you have to create a bridge domain now under tenant networking so you have to go to networking right click and create bridge domain the name is very uh, descriptive if you see bd means bridge domain underscore vl means the vlan which is associated to this bridge domain which is 701 and then the subnet which is 10.1.1.0 slash 24 is the subnet generally we provide the gateway ip as a name right and then we have to call the vrf vrf is vrf server one then you have to type uh, click next plus button then you have to provide the subnet in which case you provide the subnet when you want to create this BD as an L3 BD and you want uh, the subnet to be advertised outside and in this case gateway is ACI itself right so if you want to advertise the subnet outside the fabric then you have to uh, click on advertise externally right so let 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 more discuss about the bridge domain scenario so let me one more paint all right so let's suppose you have your environment where you have two spines let's discuss this way. you have these two spines right and now you have let's suppose one leaf two leaf three leaf let's take this an example connected this way this is connected this way connected this way connected this way this one is connected this way and this one is connected this way right this is spine one this is spine two right this is leaf one this is leaf two this is leaf three okay now let's take an example of leaf one let's suppose we have a bare metal server connected with this leaf generally it will connect to two ports but let's take this an example and this port is fast ethernet 1 slash 1 and the IP of this server is let's suppose 10.1.1.2 slash 24 and gateway is 10.1.1.1 now this 
server should be reachable from outside right so first of all we have to put this subnet in an epg or bridge domain so that what we discussed so let's suppose that bridge domain is bd underscore vl 701 underscore underscore 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 slash 24 now because this this particular subnet should be advertised externally so what all the requirement the requirement is first of all inside the bd you have to tick advertise externally right and second thing is you should have a l3 out connectivity from leaf not from this leaf even the the border leaf towards a external network let's suppose this is your legacy environment or your router between this router and the leaf you you are running a routing protocol which is let's suppose eigrp so normal system 241 or 242 anything now what is happening when you are creating a bridge domain and you are assigning it a subnet and you are clicking on advertise externally and there are some uh, contract which need to be in place when they are in place then this particular subnet is advertised through EIGRP towards this router and now it's this router responsibility to advertise this subnet to outside world let's suppose through MPLS network you have uh, one more site here where you have one more small router here you have one more switch legacy let's suppose it's uh, switch one and here we have one pc connected you can say right and let's suppose the ip address of this pc is 20.1.1.1 slash 24 now this pc this this system want to reach this server so how it is possible the possibility is this way this is l3 out connection i not it down right so the, the possibility is first of all you have to create a logical bridge domain inside that bridge domain you have to advertise the network to advertise externally contract is in place this interface should be part of which vlan vlan 701 as an access port let's suppose now let's suppose the leaf itself is a border leaf so it receive a route through bd and it advertise because here it's you have mentioned that advertise it's externally and inside bd you have also selected the l3 out let's suppose the l3 out name is here the l3 out name is l3 out server 1 so now inside an bridge domain there is an option where you have to select the l3 out means through which l3 out you want to advertise your network so here l3 out server 1 so once you have done this much configuration then what will happen through this l3 out link as eigrp is already configured this particular subnet is advertised towards the router now it's legacy uh, device or this router responsibility to advertise this network either through mpls link or or whatever uh, facility you have to reach the other location and then through router it will reach to the actual person now this person initiated traffic it will first reach to the, to the router interface the gateway through router router check the routing table let's suppose here we are running bgp hypothetically so now this this route will this this packet will advertise through bgp to this particular router because uh, through this router we are receiving this subnet and then 
through this router it will reach to the leap switch now it's leap switch responsibility to check where this particular um, device is and then it will send the packet to this direction right so this is the example of layer 3 bd but you can also create the layer 2 bd as well for example you have a server here here you have a server now the server is connected to leap 3 and in this case the gateway is firewall let's suppose this is a firewall you have means you do not want to participate in the routing you just want to act as a switch in this case you will assign you will create a bd name let's suppose bd underscore vlan uh, 301 something like that underscore no subnet means it's a l2 bd in this case what will happen firewall let's suppose the uh, interface ip or the sub interface um, the ip configured is 30.1.1.1 slash 24 on firewall end and this is a server so in this case the ip of the server sh should be 30.1.1.2 slash 24 and the gateway is 30.1.1.1 so in that scenario this particular leaf switch is just acting like a simple layer 2 switch so you will only learn the mac of this device here and you will forward that information to the firewall so in that case if the server want to go outside the environment the firewall is the gateway now it's firewall responsibility to send him out either it's an let's suppose internet link right so the traffic which is coming from internet should first hit to firewall firewall check the policy then if policy allowed then it send the traffic towards server or might be there is a there is a load balancer in between there are a lot of other device in between but yes in this case you are acting like just a layer 2 so i hope you understand now the difference between layer 3 bridge domain and the layer 2 bridge domain and and their use thanks for watching